Well, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You're on the ball. Just I've been live for 10 seconds and you're in. Good afternoon. How are you? Are you good? Have you had a good weekend so far? I'm absolutely... <laughs> I'm exhausted. And uh, I, I have just spent... Trying to add up how many hours it was. At least probably about 60 hours, maybe less with Margaret Austin. <laughs> and like, oh, you imagine the two of us together brainstorming. Okay, we did sleep some somewhere in the middle of that, but it was full on and it was great. And I'm kind of hyped, but I could crash and burn it any minute. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, Sue, good afternoon. Hello, Marg and Jeanette. Good to see you, Bernadette. The answer to your question. Oh, sorry, I saw your email just before. No, it hasn't gone up yet, so you have not missed your Calendar Club email. I wrote it, but I wrote it after we did the demo show for the Satchel um, on Wednesday night, and then I didn't have Steve or Cass available by the time I'd written it. So it will go up tomorrow. One of them will get it up tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh, but you'll have it before you go. Um, good afternoon, Yvonne. And both my Yvonnes are in the building. It is cherry blossom season in water. Is it really? Oh, how lovely. That's much closer than going to Japan, isn't it? Um, Christine Davis, good afternoon. Down the way. Meg, did I just see you with a whole heap of zucchinis? Uh -huh. it's, uh, Dad's bringing more zucchini. So I'm into the zucchini relish tomorrow. I bought a heap of jars back from Mark's. I picked up my new Fowler's jars. Well, they're not new, but you know what I mean. Marketplace ones. I am set to go. It's bringing plums. Good afternoon, Jimmy. Um, so tomorrow's going to be mail orders, quiltest life, geisha layout for the panel, and preserving. That's what we're doing this afternoon. Um, Gwen, good afternoon to you. Lee, hi, buddy. How are things up your end of town? You quilted this. This is, this is your work up here on the wall. How cool. Um, Christine says hi. Denise, Gwen says good afternoon. Hello, Diana in Costa Rica. Uh, did you get your email? We need to talk. It's all sitting here in a box ready for you. So can you check and let me know if you've got your email and in, um, in, in, in an email to me? That would be great. And then I'll chat with you later on. Del, I'm so sorry I missed your call. Robert told me you had called. I'm back and I have your order. So if there's anything else, I shall touch base with you first thing tomorrow morning. I do apologize. See, so just and I just apologize to everyone. Um, uh, uh, Mark Evans says she's lost her sound, but my sound is all working, Mark, so can you check? Oh, she can't hear me, can she? There's no point in telling her to check her sound, is there? No. I don't know how to get around that. I don't know. But mine's all working here fine, I think. Okay. Um, Bronwyn, Chris, Suzanne, Judy, my goodness, is everyone in their sewing rooms this afternoon? Hello, Kate and Valerie. Uh, oh, you've got it back. Oh, that's a relief. Uh, Doreen, good afternoon to you. And also Janet and who else have I got? I've caught up. Yay. Jackie, good stuff. Lynn, howdy doody. Glenda, hello up there. Um, lots of talk about Nagambi Soiree. Lots and lots of talk about it uh, in the last 48 hours. Hello, hello Doreen and Janet, good afternoon. So, Picture this, just quickly, discussions over the last 48 hours. Um, the Chandler's Cottage 2023 Advent Calendar and where I was going to get it all done, how it was all going to be packed off and ready. That's very important. And I know that you don't need it till the 1st of December, but there are 25 days to do and all of the kits to be made and we need to have them ready quite early so they are ready and we can work out the size boxes to order to put them in and the beautiful stickers need to be designed for the covers and the whole the whole thing so that was high on the agenda believe it or not then there's the 2024 calendar so i'm fossicking through margaret's you know Mark, what have you got in the way of delf wear for my dutch month and what have you got so there's lots of discussion about ca hi june calendar and she missed me oh my god um, so there's all of that. Then there is the May Autumn Soiree. So I'm starting, I wrote on the back of the flyer. You right? 
You right? <laughs> I was gone 24. Look at it. I was gone how long? Um, so you'll get one of these in your orders now about the autumn soiree. And we talked lots about decorations. We worked out the table settings. We worked out food. We did the whole lot. And um, I said, please, 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 can I do the display for the stand? So one of the projects I'm going to give you an idea for today, I'm actually going to do as a... I love you too. <laughs> as a table runner um, for the autumn soiree for the state, which... Yeah, good spot. Good spot. Right there on top of all my fabric. This is mine. Don't worry, it won't be posted out to you. This is my stash she's on. But yeah, love it. Um, so there was all of that discussion. Then, moving on, winter soiree, plus a couple of workshops that we are setting up to do between us for embroidery and bags, a lot like um, the Look At Me bag that we did. Then we go to the Christmas in July soiree in Nagambi. Feeling tired yet? Yep, then we did that. And then a week after that, Festival of Quilts. So we're on with Natasha and Vivian and working out when we're going on the Craft to Create TV channel, when we're going to be live on Natasha Makes and what we're doing at festival. And then it just it kept flowing through to the Garfield uh, Christmas soiree. That's what the 48 hours was and lots and lots of other stuff in between. Robert hasn't found any reading glasses for me. I'll sit back like this. I did send him on a hunt. Good afternoon, Kathy. Lovely to see you. Hi, Sue. Sue says hi. Francis is here. Oh, well, that would explain a lot, Diana. Let me send that again for you. Um, and, oh, excellent. I'm glad. Um, it sounds a bit scratchy. I'll get Rob down here to check it, if it is a bit scratchy, and then we can kick on for the day. Robbie? Um, right, so what we need to do first of all, though, is focus on what we're doing first, which is an autumn soiree. Can you just have a listen to it down there for the girls? They said it's a bit scratchy. So I don't know if we've got a dodgy connection or something somewhere. Okay. Just to double check for me. And then my handbag, probably. Uh, all right, there, everyone else is fine. We're all good, Rob. So we might, we might just go to the handbag. If not, I'll squint. It's all good. All right, so there's just, this mess is on, and I'm, you know, it's, we're already into February, and I'm, we're kind of planning the whole year through, but that's kind of really important when you think about how early we have to send things to Festival of Quilts. And for those that are watching that go to Festival of Quilts, woohoo, we'll get to see you. And if you're on Natasha Makes, I'll be there with Gemma and Natasha. But I also love it. For our Chandler's Cottage friends here, of course, which is the majority of you, because you will get to see what we're up to through the Chandler's Cottage page when we're there. So it's going to be the first year since COVID where we travel and do stuff. So, okay, now I'm really tired just thinking about it again. Heavens. All right. It is exhausting fun, Meg. You just stay the way you are because if you come anywhere near here, you'll get put to work. <laughs> All right, so... Soiree flies going in. Uh, we've sold over half the tickets already. So if you are still working out how to get together with your girlfriends or working out which day you're going to come or anything like that, then um, please get onto it really soon. I'd hate you to miss out, particularly for that first autumn one and particularly on the Sunday, I think. That's the that's the troublesome thing. Hey, handsome. What you doing? Do you mind that Coke? Do you want to switch me cameras? What would you like to do ever so quickly? You want to switch cameras? You just keep coming, you should. To the two? To this one? Okay, all right. So, if the sound's not that great where you are, Jimmy, I know, said yours isn't good, everyone else was okay, and then in between, just bear with us for a minute, and Rob will have a look and see if he can do something about it for you. Not really sure, but we'll see. It's a bit hard once we start to fix it up. We have other obstacles to deal with at the moment. So, what we wanted to do today was kickstart our sunburnt country quilt. Have we got plenty of other things to do? 
Yes. Has Lisa got other things she should finish and do? Yes, but there's nothing like the thrill of starting a new quilt. And with the autumn soiree, I would like to have this baby done and up on the wall. I'll also have out this one, of course, because it's Autumn Colours, which is Southern Jewels 2. And we realised today that it was not on the website. And we also realised it didn't have the most up-to-date image and quilt, which is this one. So we've fixed that up on the pattern and also on the kit. And I have popped the kit on special today. We've taken $25 off it for this big thumper. It is a huge quilt. Uh, and I can't fit it all in the camera. And it is really, really good value even when it is at 200, uh, no, 175, so I've marked it down to 150 today for a big, it is really a very generous sit on the top of your queen size bed quilt. So you might like to have a look at that. When I put quilts like this on special, it is literally getting to the point where it's just a really great way to buy the fabric on sale because it's big yardage, let alone uh, get it with the pattern. So please have a look at that too. Okay, and then um, that little wicker cream bag, Rob, or on the dash of my car is all I can think. For my glasses? I'm looking. Jimmy says it's fixed. Right. So, I love you too, gorgeous fluff ball. Okay, this is the quilt that we're going to look at. So last week, we went through all of our florals, and I've got heaps of you that have got all of your four meter pieces on its way to you at the moment or you've already got it so I thought it was pretty safe just to do the first couple of steps today so that's what we're going to do first up I am going to mess with the pattern now oh no you've just got it or you've just downloaded it but I am going to start messing with and that's the lovely thing with this pattern there is a heap of flexibility with it so I'm going to show you a couple of little changes I'm going to make just today while I start prepping and cutting it that you might like to think about as well. Is that okay with you, gorgeous? You're all good. And then I've also got another little kaleidoscope pattern for you, which is a little kaleidoscope table runner. And this just went live, according to Steve, at two o'clock, I think, today on the website. So if you pop the word kaleidoscope runner in, I'm not sure he's popped it under the tag. That would be one thing we'd need to check. But um, under kaleidoscope table runner, you will find it in there. Some of you may recognize this. We did have it quite a while ago in a little pre-cut pack way back when we were way back at the warehouse quite a while ago. Um, and we've updated this pattern. If you're in a course life, do not download it. You're getting this popped up for you this afternoon. So you'll actually have this as part of your membership. So this is a little table runner. So this is also a hexagon kaleidoscope system. And he finds both glasses. I'll have those ones. Thanks. Where were they? Were they in my bag? Oh, I love you lots. Thanks. Okay, so this is a really nice little pattern to play with. This was designed to run with these pre-cuts that we had that were four and a half, two and a half, and one and a half inches wide. Now, you might still have those in your stash. You might want to have a bit of a rummage, but that's what they were designed to go with. But I've taken that out and made it its own pattern. I've set it up with its own requirements list on the back, so it says you'll need five 25 centimeter or 10 inch strips. But, again, there's a few things that we've already got in our stashes that will work. So for me, with this, and I'll come back to this once we've started this one, these Sunburnt Country Packs that we had just last week, this is a perfect pack to play with this pattern. So if you've got one of these in your stash for all those beautiful outback colours, this is going to work really well. So if you're in a quilter's life, and just in case I've got some newbies watching today that don't know about the club, this is my club, so it's $10 a month for patterns and tuition and recipes and things. And we always put up a couple of patterns a month instead of you buying them. So this one will be going up in there um, straight after the show. That's ready to go. Did I miss anything? Did I? Did I miss anything? Good afternoon, Helen and Anne and Michelle. Hello, Gay. Good to see you, Margaret Upston. It's been so long. <laughs> um, Jennifer, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Sharon, that's okay. We will, we will, we will FaceTime you live from Garfield if you can't come. Not a problem. Marilyn, good afternoon. Tina, greetings. Annette, hello. Oh, that's lovely. You're all here. Super. Um, Diana, could be in your spam folder. I'll, I'll send it again after and we'll have a chat. Um, 
Okay, so do this one first. Oh, that Southern Jewels that's up on the wall. So it's 94 inch by 83. Big quilt. Big panels. Oh, I can't. You know, this is, we will be remaking this as well. When the big mega waratah bouquet fabric comes back and I have the next round of strike-offs arriving from Japan this week. So at some point I'll be able to pop in and show you. Right, now I've set up this cam there's a camera over there and I have set it up so that we can have a serious chat about this pattern. So if I just pop that on, um, and I would say, based on the photo I'm looking at, the, <laughs> the camera got knocked. Hang on. Okay, should be, if I sit that there. All right, let's pop over here. Just because I want to run through a couple of the bits in the pattern with you. So if you, if you haven't downloaded your pattern yet, if you haven't bought your digital download or yours hasn't arrived in the mail, um, you might want to just take a note of where what I'm talking about or take a note of how many what the time is because then what you can do if you rewind this later from YouTube um, then you can go straight to the spot that we're talking now rather than having to troll through the whole thing so you've got a digital download versions got when you print it out you're gonna get a really nice big picture of the quilt but also come through here you've got a full a layout of all of the hexagons that go into this quilt this is going to be priceless for you when you come through to actually deciding which of your blocks you're going to put where now I realize we haven't even started cutting yet but I want to work backwards for you because I'm going to tweak the first step that we do I've done a little bit of a, a little bit of a count and there are five uh, sorry one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these big clusters of the kaleidoscope blocks. So these ones here on the front. And um, that means seven, so there are 49 little of these little kaleidoscope blocks that we're going to make that make up these big clusters. And then around the outside of that, I've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifteen. Just wanted to double check. Fifteen of them sitting out on their own. So that comes to 64 kaleidoscope hexagon blocks. So you can see some of them have been set out on their own over here and some of them are actually into these big clusters. When you actually do all of your cutting you're going to end up with 71. So you end up with 71 but we only need 64. Now that's really good with a kaleidoscope quilt because it really, I mean, it's such a wonderful experience to get all of the, the pieces that are cut from the same part of the print and then you can twist them round and see the best way to get the best kaleidoscope effect with them. But invariably, you'll have your favourites and then you'll have some that ooh, maybe not so much. So you do like to have a few extra ones and you can always pop them on the back of your quilt. But with this quilt, you can actually add more in if you want to and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to add a whole heap more in good afternoon Karen how are you um Naya hello to you Jenny Wren listening with headphones fingers crossed the internet last heading back from a weekend ah oh, in Canberra very nice very nice um okay so I'm going to add more so see this, I mean, this quilt was inspired by a beautiful exhibition one that um, Betty Braithwaite from Tassie did, right? So she, this was sort of Betty's layout, but but I want to go back and add more to mine because I'm going quite light with my colours. The original one, I used the dark brown background of the Outback Floral. This time I want to keep it really light and bright, but that means I can add sort of more in without it having, that'll look like they're floating a lot more effectively. So all of these areas around here, I can add more in. When you come down and have a look at the pattern, at here, you can see, oh, I think you can see, see we've actually marked in all these little triangles. All these little triangles are actually pieces that you will cut out of your background and put together. So if you want to, you can take out some of these background triangles and you can put more in. So I've just grabbed my highlighter for now because I want to play and I think I would like another one of my kaleidoscope blocks here. 
and I could have another one here and I could have another one up here if I wanted to. So you can go around and perhaps find some extra spots if you wish where you can put more kaleidoscope work in rather than having background. You might lose a little bit of the floating effect, but I don't think so. I really don't. I think it's all going to work. The other thing is, if you cut some of your stacks when we do the kaleidoscopes and you don't need this many, you can just break it down and use the individual triangles to replace some of the background. So I might just pop one little triangle of floral in down the bottom. I might put in another one over here. I could put in one in the middle over here. So I might just, you know, scatter, or I'm going to have another big one here. So you see what I'm doing? You can just sort of, it's literally going to be like, dare I say, colouring by numbers, and you can put, oh yeah, I'm putting more up here. You can put more in, or you can take away. So this is the layout we've used, but essentially you've got this whole hexagonal triangle grid to work with, and you can choose what goes where. I can't help myself now, I want to keep colouring. So, with that in mind, yes, I'm going to have an extra seven blocks to play with, which is great, and I do remember when we made this quilt, that was really, really handy when we were doing all of the big clusters to get a good balance of colours in, in the big groups of the kaleidoscope blocks together. But if I'm going to start adding some more in, I would like to end up with a few more blocks. So I'm going to change the first step in the pattern. Ginny, you're going to have to move in a minute. Margaret Upston, good afternoon. I did say hi. Good afternoon. Hi there, Margaret Upston. Are you working yet? <laughs> if I've got to go, if I'm going back to do a show, I, I want to know that you're down the shed doing half the stuff we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so much to do. But on the other hand, it's very, very exciting. Okay. It's just, it's just fantastic. Okay, Jin Jin, you're going to have to move. You really are. And I know you just love being right there, you beautiful creature. Right. Right, first step of the pattern. There is at the top, when you download it or you get your copy in the mail, a heap of notes. And we don't usually do the whole lecture at the start bit with kaleidoscopes felt the need so one don't forget the copper rule do have a read through first and I even found that really important today to do this step back to what I'm going to do to the first step I worked out what I wanted at the end and I have worked back so I'm ready to tweak on step one um, we're going to use pins and it's really important that you don't remove the pins until we've finished our cutting and you'll see that as we go Handle the pieces as little as possible, just, just saying gin, and then when the strips have um, no flower pins, move the stack with pins rather than the strip without pins. I will explain that as we go. I haven't grabbed my flower pins. I might need to go and steal a pack from out the back. Um, stitch with a stitch length of two and a half. Oh, we're not there today. We're not even there yet today, but we'll come back to those notes later. Okay, so. Uh, you've got your requirements in there, so most of you have grabbed your grabbed four meters, which is great. So you've got plenty to work with, and you'll have some left towards binding or backing or a sleeve as well, which is great. Background, we're going to come back to that. Remember, because I need to talk to our distributor tomorrow, I want to be want to be able to offer you two or three different background colors to work with, and I am still auditioning a couple. And then I want to check that we've got enough stock for everyone and then make it a good deal. Okay, so there's a few little steps just to show you. I'm auditioning a few. And keep in mind what I said. I was never happy with the first version's background. It was, we went to like a coffee colour because we used to have the original floral that had some of the cream waratahs in it. But we, it wasn't right. And the other thing about it too, it had no movement in it. It was a flat solid and I think that was the error because even though it's subtle, there is some shading in the background and under the Australian sun, particularly in the cream. And we went for a flat background and it just, it was flat. It looked flat. This is W2 Shadow Play. I've got barely anything here, but I'm going to 
give Tim a call in the morning and just see what I can get for us and do a deal for this because again we need another three and a half meters so I've got to get this right. Um, the other one I am auditioning and a couple of others are a couple of the shimmers. Some of you might like a busier background and this one's got the gold shimmer sparkle on it. It's going to depend on the look that you want and the room that it's going into um, and you know I'm going to be at your mercy, at your at your beck and call, whenever you want some samples sent through of swatches or whatever, I will do that for you so that you are really happy with what you've got to work with, depending on the colour you're um, going to choose. So uh, some of you are going with the pink. I have not played, oh, I'll show you what I mean in a minute. When we get to coordinates, I'll talk to you a bit about different coordinates for different colours. But you can see this W2 is going to work perfectly as well. Um, for the teal and pink and then when you get down to the the red versions if you're on the the ivory with the red background this will work as well but if you're going to go for the black with the red you are most likely going to run black but again I'm trying to find you something that's got a little bit of movement in it in black We've got to get the black right because this is solid true black background. It's not shaded on the black. So I'm just trying to find something. I mean, we can always run straight black. Um, and as uh, if Lisa were watching, she'll say, and then Lisa will get me to quilt it in a um, like a pale green or uh, like a grey green or in a in a like an, an antique gold colour, and then that breaks up the background colour anyway. So. But um, I'll come back to those. But background sort of can be the last thing we do at the moment and then you'll be in that position to audition all of your kaleidoscope blocks. Right, so first instruction says cut an 18 inch width of fa fabric parallel to the selvage down here. Off one edge and set aside to use for your binding or your backing later on. So essentially what that means is, is that this is, the, this is my full width of my fabric. Essentially what that means is to get all of the blocks that we need, we don't need the full width of the fabric, but we've had to do buy that much to get the repeats that we need for all of the blocks. So what I'm going to do, I'm not taking off that much. I'm only going to take off 10 inches because I want to end up with more blocks. So once this is off, our fabric will get rotated and we'll layer all of our layer all of our repeats off up. We'll be cutting that'll be gone. Just ignore that bit. That'll be gone. And then we'll be cutting strips this way. And we'll get so many sets of wedges of six out of here to make our kaleidoscope. So I want more. So instead of cutting off 18, I'm only going to cut off 10. Who's going to bed in New York? Oh, Violet, I'm so sorry. I didn't even see that you had joined us. <gasps> it was so lovely that you popped in. Please come back and watch another time. Um, oh, so, isn't that so cool? So, oh, Violet was with us today in New York. So nice. So I'm not taking off that much. I'm only going to take off my 10 inches. And then I'm going to be cutting from longer strips. Now with that, what I also just want to point out, when you do come to cut... If you, if you leave more on like I do and you want more kaleidoscope blocks to play with, but you could use them for this and then you could whack them in a, <laughs> whack them in a table or, one or anything, whatever's left over, or make cushions or your pillow slips or anything, just keep in mind that you're probably going to have to be a little bit more shifty with your cutting mat because most of us have a standard cutting mat that only goes up to 18 inches. So you just might want to think about, okay, when I come to the cutting later on, I'm going to have longer strips, so I'll need to rotate my board, or I might need to very, very carefully pull my fabric down with the pins in it. So just, just keep that in the back of your head as well. You might want to get yourself, borrow a girlfriend's board and line two up side by side, abut them and tape them together. So you've got a longer area with the board underneath to cut. So just have a think on that. Radio Gin, this is it. Excuse me, can, can I have this? Thank you. And we just, we get, I, I know, I know, I know. It's very sad. All right, go find Dad. Go find Dad or sit on the closest bit of my, yeah, that's right, sit on my fabric. All right, so 
I've got my four meters here and I folded it over into four because I did read what Emma's note <laughs> said on my original handwritten bit and going, put a new blade in and also, I do have a new blade in, but also, um, you know, it's all, our blades are always really sharp, but if you, if it's time for a new blade, you do it now. You're going to have to excuse me for a tip because my big ruler's out here. Look at Jimmy. Where's my ruler? Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So I've got my big ruler. We'll go back to the overhead. Please also remember that I'm left-handed if you haven't watched me cut before. So I'm naturally coming over to this edge and putting my ruler over this side. If you are right-handed, you're going to be like there or you're going to be down the other end. But I'm going to take this edge off 10, centi 10 inches worth. So I've got four thicknesses. My ruler is going to go through here. Sorry, my blade will go through here perfectly fine. It, we're not up to the kaleidoscope stage yet, so we don't have to be absolutely perfect. Our patterns underneath don't need to perfectly line up or anything yet. We're just trimming off what we don't need at the moment. Afternoon, Jill. Hi, Margaret and Denise. Oh, Diane, hi. And Mel's here too. Awesome. Okay. So about 10 inches off for me, and then I'm going to have strips this long that I'm going to be cutting my wedges from later on. So 34 there, I'm coming back to 24. I'm going to line up one of the lines on my ruler with the fold, uh, and then I've made sure the folds are parallel to one of the lines on the mat, and that is probably the best I'm going to be able to do with a piece of fabric this size that's this big. If you want to draw it on first, you can. If you're worried about slipping or anything, you can do that. So then I'll just slide this down so it's underneath my mat. Can I make it? I can make it, I can make it. Right, and you'll see I haven't even got them even up this end. It was just really a case of being able to chop through a lot quicker. Good afternoon, Karen DeWilt. Just to make sure we got through. There we go, and I'll pull that off. So this piece, this piece is really nice. It's a really good size, and I imagine that I might bind. Because I don't, again, I don't really want a, I want a really modern, more contemporary look and a really light, fresh look to this quilt. So to, to go back and put a solid binding on, which I've done here in the, in the orange, is probably not going to give me the effect I want. So I actually, I reckon I'm gonna come back and bind in this and there'll be ample there for me to do that. So we'll pop this aside and I'll keep it, no I'll keep it nice, keep it nice. Um, I'm going to fold that and pop it over one of our ladders that we keep our fabric on that's for bolt cutting and everything so it stays nice And because I've sort of got all those edges together. It'll be really easy to come back and um, cut straight pieces off that to use for binding later. Okay, step two. So, look, it's pretty risky, wasn't it, uh, talking and doing that cutting at the same time. Take your time. Just... Check once, check, no it's not check once, oh, that's me, check once and cut fast, um, check twice, cut once, you'll be fine. Step two, straighten up the edge perpendicular at right angles to the remaining selvage. Okay, so you just need to move all this stuff because I kind of want the whole, the whole bench that you can see. Okay, that. What I want you to remember as well, and the worst, the worst case scenario is maybe needing, I don't know, 30 centimetres more. If, if you made a cut wrong, it's really not going to be a big thing and you just ring me and uh, uh, honestly, please don't, please don't stress over it too much. I, I really think you'll be absolutely fine and it's, it's not, it's not a biggie. Well, it's not with this stuff because you know where you got it from and I've got bits of it, but... Okay. 
Right, right, right. Put all that over there. Now you see what I mean? I'm managing a, a big piece and my piece is now longer that way because I've left more on than what it says in the pattern. So what, 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 what we need to do now, straighten up one edge to the remaining selvage. Oh, well that's down the other end. What puts that to me? That's up that end. I can work backwards. Perpendicular. So I make sure that the selvage is sitting parallel with one of the lines on my mat. And then I'll make sure one of the lines on my ruler matches up with that line on the mat. And then we can come straight down here. This is really just setting us up for cutting the accurate repeats. Lining up one of the lines on my rulers here, making sure that this line's straight there. Everyone's at the right angle. Let me chop that bit off. Now what we're going to do is find the 24 inch mark, and that's because the fabric is at 24 inch repeat. Fun fact, you can only have a 24 inch repeat with traditional screen printing out of Japan. So my designs will never be bigger than 24 inch and that is why when you get a panel print like the ones that you bought, that you all gobbled up last week, those new oriental ones, they are 24 inch. So when I do fabric design I work in multiples. Um, I work in 12, 6, I work in 12 or 6. Is that right? Hang on, let me do it. I work in... Uh, can I go higher than that? Let me think about it. I can work in 8, I can work in 6. I can work in multiples that fit into 24. I can't do 9. So we can do 6, we can do 8. Um, we can do 12. I can't do 16. <laughs> and sometimes I would really like to be able to do 16. But that is why we have a 26 in, sorry, 24 inch repeat here. So this is my 24 here on my board. And if you have a look back here, I'm just making sure that that's perfectly lined up. I'm trying to speak really nicely because I don't think I've actually spoken without slurring my words for the last 12 hours. Good afternoon, Carol. Oh, it's a beautiful afternoon to be in the garden, Karen. It's very, very nice. I, um, I think I might be out there with the chookies and doing a bit later. Okay. Oh, no, Mum and Dad are down. <gasps> what am I saying? Mum and Dad are coming for dinner. You knew that. Was, you would have corrected me. So, 24 is here. So, see this waratah here? That, down a bit. that is that waratah there. So that is what I am cutting to, okay? So I'm smoothing over. And this first piece that we're going to cut, so I'm at right angles again, making sure everything lines up. This first piece I'm cutting is going to be my template. Now, I don't know if you remember, but when we did when we do the Melba Kaleidoscope quilt, which is a different look again, because it's octagonal, instead of hexagonal, we cut wedges and we use them as our templates. It's, it's not a stack and whack essentially, like we call this one, um, or it's a common name for this one. It is a fussy cut kaleidoscope, but the same thing. We cut one and then we use it as our template over the top. So this guy here, this is it. Here's the guy. And now what we're going to do is lay out the next bit. Now you would think, maybe, maybe you could just really roughly line all this up. But remember, you've got different weft and weave in this fabric, depending on if it's uh, how and when it was bolted and all of that. You can get a little bit of movement in big pieces like this. Some of you will find when you get your fabric order that there will be no fold line in the middle. That means it's come off um, an ROT roll so you haven't got that line there to iron out but if you do 
you'll be able to just find that out easy with a bit of water because you need your fabric out flat for this okay so now when I come through and look I'm literally wanting to match up that pattern so that goes there that's that leaf so I should be able to literally overlay our template or our first one over this so it gets to the point where you cannot see goes there. you can't see almost where that join is I'm off there so just have a little play get that as close as you can here we are yeah, so you can get to the point where it just kind of all, it all blends and you can't tell where one starts and one finishes. So you'll get a, you might get a little bit of movement across the bolt, but we will be able to correct that when we come back and layer them up. So now I'm going to cut right down through here. And that's number two. So if you are wondering, yes, if you were doing like an octagonal um, kaleidoscope, yes, you need eight repeats instead of six. Now, this one underneath, I'm going to take him off. I'm going to set him aside on my stool because I always want to use this same one for my template. Otherwise, you can, you know, slowly alter the repeat that you're cutting. And just while I'm doing this, um, I have had a look at what we, what will be suitable or what I'm going to use for the coordinates in this because we've got so the, all of these blocks that have been made up from this print as kaleidoscopes and then we've also incorporated in um, some uh, strip paste um, fabrics and then cut the wedges from those so they give us a little bit of contrast in the quilt so that's these guys in here oh sorry I'll put them on this camera it's a bit closer so they're these ones in here you can see so we've used different tones of fabrics and layered them up together to create these really sort of cool blocks so I've worked out the colours that I wish to use um, for, for my Outback one and I've put them together in a pack. Just I would have a look in your stash, um, I'll show you some other ones that you might already have that you can use. So that's my set there. So I've popped those in a pack today in case you want to grab them for this one. I will work out ones for you for the pink and the black Oh, sorry and the red green ones as well and I'll have them done for you this week and I'll pop them up but as I said I'm going to show you what you might already have in your stash that will work and you don't need much you know you literally need um, 10 centimeters or a four inch strip of each so there's a good chance you're already going to have them so we'll have a look Good, good afternoon, Deb. Just got home from Hillsville, my hometown, Deb. Where'd you go? Did you go to Four Pillars? Did you go to the pub? Did you go to the sanctuary? Where'd you go? Did you go to Marinda Dam, Badger Creek Weir? Oh, there's the best little craft shop in Main Street, Hillsville, and the best bookshop as well. Okay, let's go there. So again, I'll put this one away. We'll come back. Now at this point, we're all really, really tempted, aren't we, just to whack two more down, but you can't, you've got to do it properly. Then, <clears throat> while I'm doing this, maybe have a look at your rulers and, and have a look and see where on your ruler you have a 60 degree line. So pretty much every ruler that you will buy will have one. Um, this On the Creative Grids one, I have it. It's marked down here. I'll show you up close in a minute. So it's got its mark on it. 
Um, my other rulers are my Matilda's own ones and they have it marked on as well. I, I do like the creative grid because for me being a lefty, I find, I don't know why, but I don't know, the way they're worked up, my brain seems to like them um, a bit more. And then I was looking for the lines on mine today and, and for me, I went, you wally, because I have in my stash um, from last year, one of the creative grids rulers, which are the, um, the half sixties. And oh, sorry, wrong camera. What am I doing? Got one of these half sixties. And I love these. And these come with a pattern with all this other stuff that you can do. Where is it? It comes with. Oh heavens, I've put it somewhere. I'll find it for you in a minute. But it comes here it is. Comes with all this these real they do great YouTubes and stuff. Lots and lots of different ideas of what you can do with the roller and how they all work. But for what we're doing today, that's my 60. Sorry, that's my 60. So I can just line this up on the edge of my strips, which cut straight along, so I do love that. Got a 30 degree one up here. And that's 60 down there. So um, I walked into the back room and had a look and went, oh, we have quite a few of those, so I put them on special. But um, but have a, have a look at your ruler first, see what you've got, um, and you'll be fine to work with a normal ruler. But you, um, yeah, depends how much you want to do. If you're just going to have a go, or if you, you find that your brain just doesn't work with the lines, um, on your normal roller, you might like one. They've got, because they've got the cool grippy stuff on them, of course. Right. I'm nearly there. Yep. So this is just going to be the first, this is the first step, okay. And it is, it's a big step, but it's the first step. So maybe you want to do it when everyone else is out of the house and you can pop a cloth on the dining table, get yourself laid out. I think, I think the magic of a kaleidoscope, it, it, in a way it's a little bit like doing English paper piecing, is that there's a lot of prep and then there's a lot of cutting and then all of a sudden there's all these uh, magical blocks that appear. So that's the, I think that's why people get really addicted to doing them as well. Um, sorry, what I was going to show you, so I'm going to do a whole heap of pieced kaleidoscope blocks for that table runner in this set, and that will have more of a contemporary look. And this is the pack that we used for the, um, the sunburnt cushion the other day as the first of our stash buster shows that we did. And you've got that pattern up um, now as a free download. So that's what that's from. But I'm thinking I'm going to do one in this. Um, that cushion. Oh, it's on Phil. Phil's got it now. It's on his couch. I might have to steal it back for the soiree. Sorry, borrow it back for the soiree. But that that went home for the bachelor pad. Oh, have I gone off a bit there? Maybe just a smidge. We're good. Oh, a bit more. Um, Megan, if you're still watching, Dad's bringing cucumbers today too, so I'm going to the butter, the butter dill cucumber relish recipe. Have I done one, two, three, four? No, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I thought I was there. Okay, that one, there's my template. Out, one more, sorry. Got a bit excited, a bit ahead of myself. Uh, and this week I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back Wednesday night again. I don't know what's going on, but Wednesday nights just seems to be the best and only time at the moment. So I'll be back Wednesday night. 
and then we might finally get back to Tuesday afternoons. But Wednesday night seems to be the go again this week. It's actually really good for me because uh, Steve's in Tuesday, Wednesday, so um, he's here when I'm not, and then it means that we can get a whole heap of new stuff organised before I'm with you on Wednesday night, so that'll be the plan. Uh, if you have a look through the under the banner today, I've, I've popped a few extra bits up for this show with the quilt and the patterns and things, but... Um, then I'll be filling orders and I'll, I'll be starting cutoffs probably 9am in the morning for me combining orders. All orders that were done on Wednesday that we held over, thank you very much, are there ready and I'll start filling them at 9. So orders can come in after that, but for the um, for combined shipping it will be 9. Now, right, here we go. I'm so nervous I'm reading it as it is. Done that. So we used it as a template and we cut the rest. Find a motive two inches in from the top corner, corner on one and pin. Okay, so what we've got to do is, you didn't see that, did you, that it had hit the floor. We have to layer up all of these. So you can see I've actually turned it now. just easier for us to get it all together. And all of my selvages that have not been trimmed off are down this end. Just think, when I move to the country, I'm going to have an Aussie country coloured quilt. It'll happen one day. It'll happen one day. Not today and certainly not tomorrow and definitely not next month, but it will happen. All right. So we've laid all these up. Yep, yep, done all of that. Yes, yes, done all of that. Two pin, pin. Uh, with one pin, pin for exactly the same point like a corner of a petal or leaf on all six cuts and slide the pin flat through all six layers to the selvage. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I can do that. Hey, you know what? We, how can I show this to you? All right, when I cut this, I've cut this longer. All right, so if you follow the pattern, you're only going to be about here. But now that I've actually got these all together, every single one is identical. So if you do have a little bit of trouble with the strength in your arms, I don't see any reason why you can't cut your strips that way as opposed to the pattern which effectively tells you to cut this way. You might end up with a little bit more waste. I might do mine that way. I don't think it's going to make a difference, just to prove a point. Um, that it's fine. Now it says to use flower pins. The reason it says flower pins, they're the ones with the flat heads on them. Let me just get one for you, I'll show you. Uh, yeah. Nope, I won't. Oh, I can't see them. I can't see them easily. But you know the ones I mean, don't you? They've got a flat head. They're just all it means is that they sit flat on the fabric, but I think our fine clover pins will be absolutely fine. We've also got these super longer ones that are designed for this sort of work, which are the the clover ones that have got the, the green head on them. See how long they are? So they're super long to hold everything in place. So I might work with these. There's a few of them in this pin cushion, so I might work with these ones. Fiona! <laughs> I love the way you all apologise. Oh, uh, what's this? I am using a big one, Bernadette. So these are the ones we use, like these are shop size. These are 36. 
those are 36 by 24 so they're big we don't we don't usually we don't sell them on the website because they are they are actually really awkward to package and send but if you would like one let me know I can always organize one for you maybe for a, a pickup at a soiree or something I'm I'm down here up in this corner because it tells me to pick a spot that's easy to identify and I'm popping my pin through and then I'm going to pick up the same spot on all of the others. I will pop down the other corner and do one close for you as well to the other camera so that you can see. Right, so they all go through and I've sort of got to give it a little bit of a wiggle and you can see how far out, look how far out I am. Alright so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to feed it through a couple of times with these extra long pins so that it's holding all of them. No, it's not. Hang on. I'm, how can I not be going through the last one? Hang on. I've got to go through there. I had missed the bottom one. There we go. So that's through. So if I come down this other end, is that it? No. If I come down this end, move this up. I knew this was going to be a challenge because there are big bits to show you but here we go. So down this end I'll grab a green one and what do you reckon we'll use the top oh actually that would be really good there that bit there so that little flower point so I'll go through that one and I'll do the same there it is there so I'll just pop my pin through exactly the same tip of that flower on each piece. So you can see what's going to happen. You just keep doing this um, at regular intervals. Well, do all the corners first and then do it at regular intervals, a little bit make like doing a jigsaw puzzle, across each side of your piece. And then what happens is you gradually pin the whole thing so that you have six layers all perfectly aligned. So that's that corner on. And you'll have a lot, there'll be a lot of this going on. There'll be a lot of smoothing. Um, I'm going to turn my board so you can stay there with me on this bit. Okay. And then I'll do, I'll do a couple more and then I'm going to show you what happens. I do like these guys. Okay, so here I'll choose another bit. I'm going to use the tip of this leaf. So I'll just. Doesn't really help you, me being left handed, does it? Pop that one through and that one through. I think you really do get to learn the difference in using good high thread count fabrics when doing kaleidoscopes because of this. Because if, you, if you've got really thin stuff, trying to get them to all align and stay in the same spot is really hard work. Okay, so now I've got these two corners done. Um, I'm going to be able to do a little bit of a shortcut for you so I can show you what happens next. And then I'll come back and realign the rest of my pieces later. So I need to do the same down this side. And I'll go in a bit further. I'll probably, it says to go in two inches. And that's sort of to save you a little bit of work on your first um, alignment and your first cut. It goes there. So now what's happening is I know that this whole this whole section here is perfectly aligned and 
it's going to be up to you how many pins you think you want. Really it is because you can go, no, look, close enough is good enough. If all of my points on my kaleidoscope blocks don't perfectly match, I'm fine with it as long as you get the pretty much the kaleidoscope effect. And then there'll be those of you, and I know who you are, who want it absolutely perfect. This will appeal to your perfect piecing OCD. You'll love it. And you'll want to pin lots to make sure they're all aligned. So that's that. Oh, do you, do, I can do another one here, but I won't. Okay, so I'm going to pin the whole thing. The whole thing. So it's all absolutely perfect, um, flat, all beautifully aligned, ready, you know, ready to cut. Then the next bit. This is where you hold your breath. Yeah, we've done all of that. We've done all of that. Okay, what what we do next is we still come back and we still trim a quarter of an inch off this edge because with all of that alignment that we have done down here, we're still going to end up with them out just a little bit. So you will need to be careful all the way through with being careful not to hit your pins. And I'm sure you've all done it before that you know that if you get a pin there, over that blade you're going to have a nick in that blade so just be really careful and always check during this this next part of the process so I only want to trim off just enough to make sure I'm nice and straight now, of course this time I'm going through multiple layers and it will be just a little bit more of a challenge for you if you don't have flat flower pins. Um, I should have probably should have done that from the other side, shouldn't I? Just would have been easier. Take that bit off. Okay. So there we go. First one's ready to go on that edge. So when we turn the page, oh, oh, oh. We are going to cut a three and a half inch strip. Sure, no problemo. I've got it sitting on number one on my mat, so I'm on the one inch line, so I'm going to come up and I'm going to cut it four and a half. Now, as I said, usually you're going to have all this pinned, but uh, I'm going to cut here because I've got these pins already in, holding all in place, and I'll come back and do a realignment on the next bit later. There it is. So that's why you need your nice super sharp blade, okay, in there. So this, so what, what I mentioned before, the instruction said, remember at the start, move this, don't so much move this, because this is usually all lined up, but mine's not, so I'm going to move it out of the way, and I'll come back and deal with him later. Sit that over there. I'm going to turn this round really carefully because it's all, all nicely lined up and let's have a look. So what you need to do is trim away um, your selvage on a 60 degree angle. So because I have chosen to go the short instead of the long, I don't actually have a selvage. Remember I said that you you will usually start and you'll have your selvage at the bottom here, but I've chosen to work with the short edge because it's easier for me to cut and this is a good way of me just seeing how many blocks I can get out of this. So if you haven't started yet, you can see. But I think, I really do think compensating um, by having a smaller width is going to make a huge difference. So for me, I'm going to start here. Now, this is my... on here, so I've got a 45 degree angle mark here, and that's my 60 degree along there. And you'll find them on, on all rulers, they should be on there, they really should. So I can use the 60. So what I would do is actually line up this 60 degree line here, 
with the edge of my fabric okay and that's all it needs to give me that 60 degree line now what I have to be really careful of here I've already encountered my first pin so I'm just going to take it out I will not move my fabric again and we're going to cut our first bit so if you go long ways on your piece you're going to have a selvage if you're going to go short ways like I have you can come right down because there's actually no selvage there and I'm lining up that 60 degree line so I can see it continues through onto the edge of the fabric but I can also see underneath my ruler that I've got the lines of the 60 degree line and the board parallel sitting nicely together so I can chop across there and take that bit off Now, what we're going to do is move this up and cut a three and a half inch strip, but it's on the diagonal. So I've got three and a half across here on my ruler, and the three and a half inch line is actually lined up with this angled cut we did the first time. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut through there, like that. So we'll continue that up. Just be careful of those pins again and just take them out as you go and you need to. See, that's oh, that was not good, was it? Take that out. I must order some more clover pins in, in the flat flower heads. You've, again, they've been gobbled up, I didn't realise. You know what, I've done two like that. Let's just grab this other thing. So, can I just show you what would have happened here? I could have used this one to cut that perfect 60 degree across there and this is going to come in super handy when I get to yes yeah, for that first one there when I get to that kaleidoscope table runner I'll show you that on um, I'll come back and show you that on Wednesday night I'll kick start that off as well because that that is done completely differently to this. Even though it kind of looks the same, it's not. So I'm going to get one, two, three, four. No, there's not much waste here at all, folks. So if you want to go the other way and cut from the short side instead of the long, you can. Now left on here, I've got Fifteen, thirty, ten. I'll get at least another ten strips. Three, four, five, ten, eleven, fifty-five. I think I'm going to end up with roughly the same. If, yeah, easily, roughly the same, if not more. Oh well, yeah. I think it's going to be fine. You can go either way, short side or long. Okay. Now just really carefully, without moving them much at all, you want them all to still be beautifully aligned, you're going to come back and cut these through the middle. Um, follow the pattern, do as I say, not as I do, and do them as you go, not like I've just moved them around the board. Just so that they are still beautifully all lined up together. You have no idea how much I've been fearing Ginny jumping back up onto the counter in the middle of all that. Mm. Okay. This is where the addiction kicks in, okay? This is where you passed that first bit of lining them all up. You've done all that tedious pinning and alignment. You've got over the first hold your breath while you cut through the six layers. And now the addiction, you can feel it, it's just it's just about to hit. It is like taking that first scorched arm and out of the pack going I'll only have one okay here we go should I take this off so you can see them a bit closer I think I should so with this pack I'm going to do all different strips okay and then put them back together for that table runner and um, so it's going to be quite funky retro like the cushion so it'll be a really different look so it won't be so much kaleidoscope of a pattern but of colours 
Um, yeah, really long ones, Catherine. It's it's. Um, hey, Leslie, no problems. Um, it, it's the flat ones are really good because you won't feel them under your ruler. But I'm with with a good grip ruler like the Creative Grids one. It's not such a it's not such an issue. But I will get some more flat pins in. Pronto, pronto. Can you see? Where's that camera? I can't pick. Oh, that's a good camera. What's that camera? Let's go over there. Is that three? Yep. I feel like they're around the other way today. Maybe they're not. Okay. Let's play. So, the great thing about hexagon kaleidoscopes is that you've got equilateral triangles. And therefore, if you don't like the original lineup of your blocks, which is what I'm doing now, you can change it. <laughs> it just gets me every time. Okay, so the first thing to remember too is don't get too excited because some of these little bits, like this little bit of gold that I've got showing up here, remember that is going to get taken into my seam allowance. So if I measure it, that's pretty much going to disappear. So I won't see that little yellow bit. So it will be more intense of all of the Grevillea flower spokes going outwards. But we can change. So what about if I put the, the tea tree... into the center like that I get a completely different effect and this time I've got this beautiful little scalloped flower happening in the middle and I'm going to get a border of the grevillea around the outside so we have recommended in the pattern um, that you construct one block at a time because it's very, very easy once you get into chain stitching and things to get your pieces mixed up. It's really good to do one at a time. And after you have done about, say, anything between 10 and 20 of them, you'll want to stop and then we'll start arranging them because you might think, mm, I need some more that have got real focus of green in the middle or I need more ones with yellow in the middle. So you might want to wait. Or oh, look at this one. This is... This is um, this is going to be really good because I can't get it right to save myself. What am I doing? I've got to put this that in the middle. Can you see what I'm uh, is happening? I'm getting this little leaf curling over. So yes. Nope. <laughs> I've lost it. I've lost it. Okay, leaf in the middle. Leaf in the middle. Okay. There we go. So, that one's come up like that. I'll put the overhead. So we're getting this really nice secondary pattern happening. Really good fun. Really, really good fun. Good afternoon, Angela. We are stuck and whacking today, mate. What are you doing? Um, hi, Sue. Good. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Nancy and Kerry Lee. Mouse, welcome. And Sue's here too. Girl Jack's in the building. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, so one thing too, you know, going back to the start, I know this fabric works for Kaleidoscope because it is, um, it's a medium pattern. It's not too small. We're going to get good variety between the blocks. And also there's a good variety of colour. So there's, there's, you know, you've got at least three really predominant different um colors in the in the print and therefore we're going to get a really good variety of blocks i could do this in my i could monochromatic this i really i really could so we could use the black and cream and it would look really really classy but what i would probably do with that i would try and add a little pop of color in in some of the singular um triangle blocks throughout the quilt whether it be a little bit of burnt orange rust or a little bit of teal if, if I felt it needed it to give it a bit of pop even just a really neutral like the ivory flowering gum or something to give it a little bit of a little bit more so it didn't look too flat that could be a predominantly yellow block or we can switch and we can put the orange in the middle 
You see what I mean? You're going to want to make a few of them up and, and then go back and go, oh, okay, I've got too many that have got yellow in the middle. I'm going to switch those around for the next one. Or we can go that way and we get the focus of the green in the middle. Um, I'll do one more that's got a bank sear in it and then I think I have created enough enough addiction, enough fabric addiction for one day. And then when we get, oh yeah, now we've got to talk about coordinates. So background, as I said, we are definitely um, going to get some of these together and have a look and I shall get onto our distributor tomorrow and have a chat about background colours for you. Look at that. That's really full on. So I, I, I think I'll at least want at least one like that with the Banksias. Um, and then if I decide that we've got enough with the predominant Banksia in the middle, we can then come back and switch around and pop them on the outside. Keeping in mind as well, that we'll lose most of these in the middle. And then, of course, you know me, if we if we do them all, I go, oh, it's too much white here. I'll come through and just whack a suffix, suffix puff in the middle of that in whatever colour I think it needs, probably from uh, one of the coordinate colours that are going to come in with these. So now when I come back and look at this, I'm happy. And I didn't, this pack I've put together that I'm going to use, and I've popped it up on the website for you if you want one, I haven't gone full on gold here. I've gone into a, uh, a Robert Kaufman softer yellow fusions because I do think I, I wanted this option of having this colour, but I didn't. I think we're going to have enough with the yellows when they come through. And also, maybe not even to use in the piece blocks, but maybe, you know, one of those little triangles of background. It might be nice every now and then, just in between them, just to have one of those come through. So. That's kind of why I popped it in. You can use it for paste ones or you can just have a little bit sitting in there somewhere. But I didn't want too much of that full on yellow um, happening. Now, as I was saying, have a look. You can grab that pack or you can, if you're doing the pink and teal or you're doing the red and green version, you can grab this pack if you're doing this one. But please do have a look. Oh, I've chopped my head off. Oh yeah, because I wanted the counter. I think. Um, please do have a look at what you've got in your stash because as I said you really only need you need to be able to cut a two and a half and a one and a half inch strip from all of your coordinates at least yeah and then you do all different combinations of them but please check what you've got already in your stash so for example if you're doing the pink and teal and you've already got your dusky pink applique essentials pack you've got two in here you're going to be able to use because they will go with under the Australian sun in the pink and teal I'll show you. just in case you don't believe me so if I pop this up here for you they all go so you could easily pull out your flowering gum piece um, the Robert Kaufman Fusions, the Batik, the little bit of Liberty, a light and a dark out of that. So if you've got that, you're made. And if you've also got a teal one, which we're out of stock of, you can use that. You, If you grabbed one of our new Friends of Periwinkle, um, you've also got mint flowering gum and a couple of darker ones in here, or one of these gorgeous darker teal ones that you could use with those. So you've got what you need if you have those two packs. And if you don't, it's a really good excuse to grab one. Boom, boom. All right. If you've got the light applique essential pack, you've also got beautiful minty greens in here that you can use as well as the flowering gum, maybe a pop of fairy frost. I mean, we're, uh, there's four in the pattern, but there's, there's no rules that says you can't use more. That's the darker green pack. That is going to go over here. So if you've already got some stuff in your stash, you're thinking, oh, I've probably got enough, you could use a couple of these greens here or with the red and green version of Under the Australian Sun. And if you've got your red pack, you're done. You've got what you need. If you've got an orange or you've wanted an excuse to buy the orange one, this is endless. You could put any two or more up to the 10 of these 
into this quilt. So if you had that, I don't know, and um, maybe half a metre of olive green or some olive green that you've got, you've, you've got what you need. Um, if you've got one of the gold packs, you've also got some gorgeous light, you know, really lovely light coloured creamy golds down to the start, beautiful rich one that will also go with all of this. So please have a look through your stash and for and for um and for and for Angela, soon to be available this week through Chandler's Cottage, if you've also sorry, through the textile pantry, if you've also got your flowering gum pack, the mega pack with ten centimetres of all of our flowering gum colours, then then you've got at least you can use at least two of these in any of the colours that we are doing. So you could use the black and the ivory and the green if you've got the classic black and cream one. Um, you can use the teal and the pink and the mint with this one. And then you've got both greens, both golds, both oranges and both reds that are going to go anywhere with all of this or with the black and green. So you you know that that pack's going to get you a long way to what you need. You could just do them all in these if you want. But I think it's really nice to mix up the textures and the patterns. So for me, these are the ones that I chose so that you've got two flowering gums, you've got a tonal under this. Oh, that was very telly silly on the feeling. And so um, you've got two flowering gums, you've got a fusions, you've got a shadow clay. And did I just say that? Two flowering gums. Oh, yeah. A tonal fusions, a shadow clay, and a metallic fusions. And so that just gives you a little bit of texture. Alternatively to that, have a look at your batik stash because your batiks are going to have that lovely marbly movement in them that will go with both of these. All right, so, oh, and you can see what I've done. I've actually gone for the orange with the little splash of green and the background to go with my solid olive green because, again, I'm trying to keep this ver my version of the quilt really nice and fresh. Speaking very seriously now, I must be tired. It's all Margaret's fault. It's all Margaret's fault. So, there you go. You've got stuff to do now. That was a, that was a demo day. I love it. So, um, get stuck in. Get your fabric out. I would, don't wash, do not wash beforehand. Please don't wash beforehand. You really want it lovely and firm with that finish on straight out of my factory so it's easy to keep it nice and neat to cut and it hasn't got any movement in it. Um, the only thing I want you to do, if yours has come off the bolt and you've got that little fold line on it, just on that bit, water, 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 press, 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 press. That's it. You don't need to do the whole thing. Just, or you don't need to starch the whole thing or anything. Just a light press and get that little line out so you can lay it out flat. You have the option of following the pattern and cutting all of that piece off if you want to that whole 18 inches or as I did you can just cut off 10 and in the long run you're going to get a lot more blocks to play with perhaps do a little bit extra stuff on the side and remember what I said you don't have to cut the long way you can turn it like I did and cut from the short end and you're going to end up with exactly the same if not more blocks because we've got that extra I put the extra width on so if you don't want to worry about the you know trying to get it right across your board and everything just do the short side because inevitably or what's happened is once you've pinned that whole thing it's not going to matter which side you cut from it's not going to move and just watch out for those pins as you go and make sure you take them out just as you have to to get through the layers so you don't put a nick in your blade and make sure that blade is lovely and sharp and you will be fine and it will all be great and you'll be able to have a lovely time with these blocks. So the step that I'm up to now as we have a little bit of a play with is to remove all the pins and the fruit will be the outside edge of each block. So what it actually says in the pattern is that the sharp the straight edge of each one will be the outside edge of the block. That's all fine and well if you're happy with how it looks. So please do that first. Find the edge with the straight grain. I'll just you bring you no 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 no. I'll just bring it back over here. So, and this is you know, this is where we've come since we did this pattern. So that's my straight grain there. I can see that the weave is parallel 
with that edge. So that's my straight edge. So it's telling me that that should be my outer edge. And that is so you haven't got any movement here, whereas this one, it's got pull because it's on the diagonal. Now, you all know what I'm going to say, don't you? You do, I know you do. I'm sure you will. So that's the straight grain on that one. So what do we, what we always do if we want to work accurately with an edge that is not a straight edge, I'll go and get it. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you've all got this. And if you don't, I'm about to go and tag it under today's show. Quilters tape. This is what we're going to do. What we're going to do, and I'm getting a new one out because I don't know why mine, I really don't know why mine is. I think I might have used it all. All that we will do, if we decide that we wish to use a side, Diane Basilman's going to be really happy about this. <laughs> it's because I'm posting hers out tomorrow. You are just going to... Oh, come on. It just can't be that hard because I'm live on Facebook. There it is. All you will do, if you decide that you need an outer edge that's not your straight, straight grain edge, all you're going to do for me... is stick a little bit of quarter inch quilters tape on that edge. You make sure it all lines up beautifully with the edge there and that's going to be it. Because what that is going to do is keep that edge now. It will not stretch and it is nice and stable and also because it's quarter inch when you come to piecing into other blocks you can literally just sit your needle along the edge of that line. Okay, so while you're putting all your blocks together and working out which way they're going to ever go around, if you can make it work for you with the edge that is your straight edge when you start, all good and well. But if not, and you need to turn, just pop on some quilting tape to stabilise the edge. I'm now just turning around to the edge that's actually the straight edge. And I must say, it is rather lovely. So I could run that way. But, you know, when I get a bit fussy down here later, I'll just whack on a stabiliser on the edge with my quilter's tape. So, what I would love to do before I see you again, I'm not saying, I'm not even going to say that it's your homework because we've all got so much on. But what I would love to do before I see you Wednesday night is I will get all of my pieces cut. No laughing, Margaret. It's not funny. I, will, I, can tell, I can feel her laughing at me now. I will get all of my blocks cut and I will get quite a few of them made up just so you can start to see how they all come together. Ideally, again no laughing, I need to get at least enough done or at least seven done so I can do um, a flower cluster for you that goes on it so you can have a, have, have a look at how it works. And with that will come cutting some of my background as well. So then we can cover that off and we'll move on and talk about those other blocks that are cut from the coordinates that go with it. Um, have a read through constructing the hexagons. If you want to wait till Wednesday night until I do one, that's absolutely fine. We essentially sew them together in pairs. Uh, and then pop another one on the edge, we press our seams open. There's a few little really cool tricks that we do to make sure we get a really nice accurate finish with them. So have a read through, have a go if you want to, and I'll get a few made up to a cluster, and then I'll do a couple more for you on Wednesday night. But we've got other stuff to do Wednesday night too. So, you know, it will be another busy evening, but that will all, that'll all be fine. All right, onwards and upwards. I hope you've got a lovely dinner planned. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, Ange. <laughs> I hope you've got a lovely dinner planned. Uh, is the roast on? Does the house smell fantastic? Um, who's, who's doing the roast tonight? I am not. Did you, Sharon? Did you make a bag? Do you remember that the gorgeous one we've got is that Madison collection? I must get that out and show you that all to you again. Um, Madison is probably is probably coming back out um, the main tote you want to have a look at it on the website um, and that's sort of coming out again in preparation to do a new version of it for a workshop that I'm doing with Margaret it's news to Margaret 
I've worked it out. I've worked it out in the last, I don't know, on the way home I worked it out. Um, Sue, thank you very much. Hello, Floria. Trish, oh, sorry. Tracy, cool. Uh, all right, you're all right. You're all good. Bag made magic. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, I... <laughs> Megan's having something with zucchini. I think that's hilarious. We are not. Mum and Dad are down. We're having takeaway. I'm sorry, but it's takeaway night because they don't live near a takeaway that we can get delivered. So that's what we're doing this evening. And we're all very conscious that when we do finally move to the country, there will be no Uber Eats delivery. So we're going to have it tonight. And that might be, you know, the last one we have for a very long time. And then we might just indulge in it for a week before we move. Who knows? That's a long way off, and quite frankly, I think it was all decided at about midnight last night that I don't have time to move house this year because there's so much to do with you. So, all right, have fun. Once you've got your fabric, get started. Uh, if you haven't got your fabric yet, have a little bit of a read-through, a little bit of a re-watch, and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evening, and we'll get some more of this done, and we'll have some more fun with some other stuff. All right? Enjoy your evening. Have a great start to the week and I look forward to seeing you Wednesday. Okay? Bye everyone.